Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's girl Fanny Longo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. I'd love to wish everyone that has subscribed to our channel and the people that are watching our videos um, a happy new year. And I just hope uh, you seize this year and do everything that you would love to do. And I mean, stay blessed. I hope you guys are doing all right. So today I'm going to be reacting to we are in the last era of the end of times refined prophecies. This is going to be in two parts because um, I don't want the video to be too long. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Imagine yourself reciting Quran with Prophet Tajweed. Do not delay, time is short. Your tutor is waiting for you for a free trial class. Download Qtor now and join other students learning Quran. Link in the description. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayati zamanun ala ummati. There shall come a time upon my ummah, upon the people who follow me, when their prayers are not prayed correctly. And when high buildings spread in every place, when people swear in the name of Allah a lot about everything without fulfilling their oath, people curse each other a lot. Bribery and adultery prevails. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy the luxuries of this world in exchange for the hereafter. So people become materialistic. The Prophet wasallam said, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ذَلِكَ فَالنَّجَاةَ النَّجَاةَ If you see this happening in your time, then seek refuge, seek refuge. Find a solution to get away from all of this. It's not an easy solution, but you need to stay away from all this. In one other hadith, a man said, Ya Rasulullah, what is seeking refuge? How do I seek protection? What do you mean by that? And Rasul Sallallahu gave an expression like this. He said, by adhering to your house and keeping your mouth shut and hold your tongue, and hand from doing unlawful until death comes to you. There's going to come a time even worse than this one, brothers and sisters, where a person becomes so confused about what is happening in the world, so deluded by everything that they see and hear, that they're not going to know what to do and where to go and who to stand with, except to stay away from things, even if they mean sitting at home, abstaining from all of this because there's not much they can do anymore. They want to do good, but where do they go? They want to avoid the bad, but it's all the way, all around. I heard a lot of young people say to me now, why does Islam say everything is haram, haram, haram? This is not true. Islam does not say everything is haram. But when there's so much haram around us and corruption, Islam looks like it's forbidden everything. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all these hadiths can be found in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, and Tirmidhi, and Abu Dawood. These are called the six books of Hadith, Numajah and Nisa'i. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us, prayers are not prayed correctly. People pray without really meaning to pray anymore. Their five daily salat are done in a hurry, in a rush, with neglect. Uh, no importance is taken to them. If money comes in the way, the prayer is lost. The prayer is delayed. If a boy wants to meet a girl to chat her up and it's time for Salat, he'll ignore the Salat. If there is something of worldly benefit to them, the Salat becomes the last thing on their mind. One brother said to me once, Brother, I don't pray Jumu'ah because I work. He said, have you tried to seek time off? He said, no, because Islam says to me, that I have to look after my family. The response to that is obvious. If it wasn't for Allah providing you with this family, you wouldn't have a family Aslan in the beginning. When you turn away from Allah and become ungrateful to Him and rely on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah describes this type of family like the family of the spider in the Quran. It falls apart. It's not stable. Then he said, high buildings are spread everywhere. This hadith also comes in a different manner. When Jibreel once entered, he sat as a man. 
And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, we saw this man enter one time. And the Prophet sallallahu was sitting with us in the masjid. And this man who entered, he had a very black beard with very black hair and a very white thaw, clothing. He did not look like he was traveling because you couldn't see any dust on his clothing and none of us knew him. So who was this man? They didn't have airplanes in those days and cars to travel very quickly. And he sat to the Prophet sallallahu very respectfully. He asked him several questions. And the last of the questions he asked him was this, Mata sa'a? When is the last hour? And at every time he would say to him, you are truthful, you are truthful. They thought, how come he's asking him questions and saying that you, he is truthful when he's the questioner. And then he's telling him that you've said the truth. As though he is testing him. In the end, he said, when is the last hour going to come? When's the world going to end? And he said, the questioner who is asking me, or the person you are asking is no more knowledgeable about its hour, about its time than the questioner. Meaning you and I don't know. I don't know any better than you. So we asked him, what are its signs? Some of its signs when it comes close. And he mentioned two things, very important. And talid al amatu rabbataha. When the mother, the servant of Allah, is one meaning, it's probably the most likely meaning. When the mother gives birth to her daughter or son, and this daughter becomes like a boss, a master over her, as if her mother is her slave. In another hadith, Rasul said, when the son, when the son, the boy, son, he chooses his friend closer and distances his father away. This time wasn't, never existed in their days. Even among the Christians and the Jews, this didn't exist. It was a time that was very unusual to the people. That the mother will give birth to her daughter who when she grows up, she acts like she's the master and boss over her own mother. And their parents, in other words. And you will see the destitute barefooted Bedouins that will be building very high towers in the sky, skyscrapers. Today we see this, many signs of this everywhere. The Bedouins are actually today in the Emirates, places like the Qatar. Now they're actually competing in this. Yatatawaluna fil bunyan means that they will be competing in making high towers. Who will make the higher tower than the other person? So materialism and uh, technology becomes the main motive of people in competing for. And if you look at society today, you will see that when people say we are an advanced society, we don't live in the caves anymore. What they're trying to tell us is that now we are more intelligent. With what? What are we more advanced in? Rasul Sallallahu said, يَتَطَاوَلُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ They'll be competing about who can make the highest buildings, high rises. Meaning they'll compete with their technology, with their sophisticated engineering and building. What is so special about an advanced society who knows how to build machines or buildings or send satellites into space or build rockets or build atom bombs. The only thing I can think about is to kill people, to destroy the poor, to show off in worldly possessions for mere greed and power the way that Iblis used to show to Adam when he said, I am better than him, you created him from fire and you created him from soil and I will lead all of them astray and make them go into hellfire with me. Same thing. So we'll be competing with technology. But as for modesty, as for character, as for trust, as for family, as for worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as for uh, justice, as for leadership in justice looking after people, as for, you know, the uh, value of human life, of children looking after the orphans, the poor, the needy, the desperate, all of this will be lost. No one will be thinking about it. In fact, let me tell you something. In America, they make $50 billion on pharmaceutical products, on medicine alone. $50 billion on medicine. What does this mean? What is happening to the world? $50 billion annually of profit on medicine. These are people who are getting ill and sick. Are people getting more sicker and ill? Are there people pumping in these diseases? Are, 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 are people denying medicine to these people? Why are they making the medicine so extremely expensive? Innocent people are being killed because medicine is too expensive. People are after capitalism. 
just to make money and more money and to climb high and rise high throughout the world. 70-80% of people are surviving on about 40 cents a day. What is happening to the world we live in? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, people will compete for worldly possessions, for technology, and they will say, as though he is saying, society will base its advancement on their technology. Whatever happened to the morals, justice, equity, treatment of others, the rights of others, modesty, this is what values a society. Not how nice you can make things and kill people with it. Our Rasul Sallallahu said, people will swear oath by Allah on false things. So you come to buy and people will use the religion to convince you to buy their product. By swearing by Allah's name, it only costs them this much, for example. Our Rasul Sallallahu tells us that they will curse Allah. La'an. And Rasul Sallallahu said, people will curse their own fathers. They said, Ya Rasulullah, who curses his own father? He said, there will come a time where people will curse. You will curse their father and so they will curse your father in return. So what, what is the meaning of this? It means that people no longer value parenthood. People no longer value the relationships of people with others. They'll wipe them off, they'll curse them, they'll have hatred and people will only think about themselves. Rasul Sallallahu tells us that bribery and adultery will, be, will prevail. Prevail. You know what prevail means? Yefsha. Meaning it becomes the norm everywhere. And he even said that there will come a time where a person will be walking down the street and they will see a man and a woman committing acts of adultery and fornication before everyone's eyes, not afraid of the criticism. And they will say, well, at least you could have just moved aside so that we can walk past, you know. Just make some room. It's okay what you're doing. It looks cute, but we just want to walk. That's all, you know. But keep going. Subhanallah. This means that modesty and morality dies out completely throughout the world, whether they are in the Muslim lands or the non-Muslim lands. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to talk too much about what is happening there. But if you do your research, you will find that in both worlds, I don't want to name countries so that I don't find, sound racist, but it is happening double, triple. Tourists go from Western countries to these particular countries in order to have a great time with their lust, temptations, alcohol, and so on and so forth. It's happening. Adultery becomes so prevailed that husband and wife divide and they divorce and children become, you know, to sort of live on their own and morality is gone because they cannot control their lusts and people will be afraid of getting married because they don't want to commit. They cannot control their desires. The man still wants to sleep around, the woman wants to sleep around. Nowadays, it's very difficult to find someone to identify you as a husband and wife. They say partner. Is this your partner? People are afraid to say husband and wife. Why? Because hardly anyone wants to get married anymore. So they say partner. Oh, we respect the fact that you don't want to get married and commit and value that partner. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy commodity from this world. They sell the hereafter for this world. And this is when a person neglects their worship, neglects the hereafter, and they focus on what they can see only in this world. Their clothing becomes extravagant. Their food, they live to eat. Their coffee, they live to drink coffee. They love to display themselves with their ornaments only to show off their beauty to the people whom they're not meant to show it off to. That was quite an interesting video. Um, I mean, at this point in time, I feel many have submitted to the worldly stuff and he's given a lot of things people care more about making money than maybe the health of other people if our governments really wanted us to be um in good health they would make things or sell things at a very very cheaper price and he's spoken about how people don't want marriages now and it's becoming common as each day progresses um Concerning that, I don't know. Why would you just want to be in a partnership? Why wouldn't you want that title of we're married? Why settle for less? It's like with each day, as many people submit to worldly stuff, we're also telling our souls to lower our standards. Why lower your standards? I think with high standards, we get more um, value out of the things we want in life. 
otherwise also us choosing worldly things over god i don't know god has put us in a position where we can enjoy life we're in good health we've got family around us we've got friends um, around us and they love us without any expectations why is it that we cannot make time for god what are we going to get from that having a relationship with god i feel like um keeps us on our toes we, we don't um forget that he's on that created us or he's on that give, is giving us all these things but once we put god aside and we say but god requires me to do this so i don't have time to talk to him i don't know how i, I just don't know even if you can't pray at a particular time make up for it always find time to Conversate with God is what I'm trying to say. Let me know what you guys actually think. If there is something you guys want me to react to, please drop the link in the comment section below and I'll be more than glad to react to it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.